Hey, in this video, we're just going to go through um, living versus non-living and what that means. We're going to understand the differences between living and non-living. Okay, so here's a picture of an apple, right? And so a computer graphic is made up of these tiny parts we, called, we call pixels. Um, but what are the parts that make up living things? Well, those parts happen to be cells. The cell is the basic unit of life. They're the smallest unit in living things, but most cells are too small to be seen with the naked eye. So what ev evidence do we have that living things are made of cells if cells cannot be seen? Prior to the invention of the microscope, the existence of cells was unknown. Robert Hooke was one of the first scientists to study cells. In 1665, he looked through an early microscope that magnified the image of thin slices of cork to 30 times its original size. So we can see kind of an image of what that might have looked like. He saw many small compartments and coined the structure cells. Hook was actually observing the cell walls of cork tissue taken from the bark of an oak tree. And Antony van Leeuwenhoek was a Dutch scientist in 1670 who looked at pond water through a microscope and saw tiny living things. We saw like really tiny small guys. He was the first to describe these single celled organisms and he called them animal animalcules. Okay, so how can how can you sort organisms based on the types of cells living things contain? Well we have either a prokaryote or a eukaryote. The biggest difference is a prokaryote has no nucleus, whereas the eukaryote does have a nucleus. Organisms composed of one cell that have no nucleus are called prokaryotes. Whereas all other cells having a nucleus, whether found in a single or many cell organism, we call a eukaryote. So uni versus multicellular. All organisms are made up of one or more cells, Organisms that consist of one single cell are called unicellular, uni means one, whereas organisms that consist of many different numbers and types of cells are called multicellular. The prefix uni means one, the prefix multi means many. All cells also have genetic material called DNA, which contains instructions for making new organisms and for carrying out all functions that keep a cell alive. In some cells, DNA is packaged inside a membrane in an organelle called a nucleus. In other cells, it floats freely in the cytoplasm. So when we're talking about a prokaryote on that previous slide that um, did not have a nucleus, well, its, it's DNA is floating around in the cytoplasm. Okay, so um, within this right here, the prokaryote, there's our cytoplasm. Prokaryotic cells include all species of bacteria. They have the basic structures common to all cells, which include a cell membrane here um, surrounding the cytoplasm and DNA. However, prokaryotic cells do not have membrane enclosed organelles such as mitochondria or a nucleus. Prokaryotic cells do not contain ribosomes, but there is a debate as to whether or not a ribosome counts as a type of organelle. Therefore, the question of whether or not Prokaryotic cells contain organelles is still up for debate in science. Eukaryotic cells include the cells of plants, animals, fungi, such as mushrooms, and protists, such as unicellular microorganisms, um, you, 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 Jelena, <laughs> I'll try and say that, and amoebas. Similar to prokaryotic cells, eukaryotic cells have a cell membrane, cytoplasm, and DNA. All right, so they have a nucleus here, um, but they also have cell membrane, cytoplasm, and DNA. The DNA is just found in the nucleus, okay? They are more complex, and they have something that prokaryotic, prokaryotic cells do not have, which is organelles surrounded by membranes. These include mitochondria and a nucleus where DNA is stored. Quick summary, cells are the building blocks of all life. There are specific characteristics of life that all living things have in common, which we're going to talk about in the next video.